Hello, and welcome to HVAC Airflow Training. Today's training is brought to you by TEC, or the Energy Conservatory, in conjunction with Ed Johnawak from Eastern Heating and Cooling Council and Bill Spohn from True Tech Tools. Today, we're going to be talking about flow hood measurements of total system airflow. So this is a step-by-step -step video. We're assuming that you've already seen the introduction video and that you now have the equipment and want to learn how to use this method of measuring total system airflow with a flow hood. So first, we want to talk about the equipment that you need. And the main equipment, of course, is a flow hood. But depending on what type of system you intend to measure, you might need one of two different types. If you're measuring a system that has multiple returns, then we recommend a powered flow hood. The reason for that is systems with multiple returns have lower flows at each return grill. And so you need a hood that's capable of measuring the lower flows. It's also important to have a hood that can compensate for the back pressure because in systems that have multiple returns, it can be very easy for the flow hoods restriction to be able to reduce the flow through the branch that you're measuring while increasing the flow in another branch. So to avoid that, using a hood that compensates for the back pressure will get you a more accurate measurement. Now, if you have a system that has a single return with a filter grill or it's leading to the, to the filter, then we recommend using a large passive hood. The reason for that is because the powered flow hoods typically don't have the capacity or the range of measurement to measure between 500 and 2000 CFM that you would typically find in a residential system. So you need the larger hood that can measure that capacity. And we wanna point out that during this training, uh, we're going to explain that only return ducts should be measured when you're trying to understand the total system airflow. So in terms of the process, we're, there's three steps. First, you need to determine whether you've got a multiple return system or single return system. Then you're going to measure the flow. And then you need to add up each reading to get a total flow if there's more than one return. We should also mention that this example is only going to show you how to do a single return. Okay, so uh, first you need to take a look at the system. You need to overview and find out whether the return to the system branches into multiple returns or whether all of the airflow is going through a single filter grill. Check each room, make sure you understand where all the returns are located before you get started. The next step then is going to be to measure the flow. But first, you need to be familiar with your equipment. You should follow the manufacturer's instructions and be familiar with each of the settings that is going to affect the measurement. For example, uh, on the right here, we're showing three different hoods. The white hood is a powered flow hood, and that particular model has a measurement mode and an adjust mode. You need to understand how each of them works. And for measuring total system airflow, you're probably going to be using the measure mode. Now, the um, blue hood at the left has a flap that's used to compensate for back pressure. I need to understand how that works and whether you should use it in this case. We think it probably do doesn't need to be used in a total system airflow through a return. The hood at lower right is the flow blaster that was formerly manufactured by the Energy Conservatory. If you're using this hood, you need to first select the ring that measures the range that you want to measure. And then you're going to set your manometer to cruise zero pressure inside the hood, which is what compensates for the back pressure. Once you know how to use your manufacturer's flow hood, then the measurement is quite simple. You simply place the hood over the return making sure that it's making a good seal against the wall or floor or ceiling. And then you press the button and record the measurement. So here we're showing that first you place the hood over the supply or the return register, and you wanna press it firmly to make sure that it's sealed all the way around. Look at both sides of the hood and make sure that it's sealing properly. And then you press the button here we'll zoom in and just show a close up of pressing that button and looking at the measurement. And you can see that this one's measuring about 931 CFM. So once you've made all your measurements, if you have a multiple return system, you need to add the flows together to get the total system airflow. 
Okay, so let's talk about pros and cons of this type of measurement. First of all, this method offers good accuracy if you're using the proper hood for the application and you understand its limitations. It's easy to use. Just put the hood over the return and press the button. The other benefit is if you buy a hood for measuring for making this measurement, it can often be used also to do supply register balancing. Another benefit is this is recognized by ANSI, ACA, and ResNet for doing grading of new system installations. On the con side, this is expensive. And the reason is because if you have uh, systems that are single return and multiple return, you're, you're likely to need two hoods. Um, second of all, you need to understand that this method is not very accurate if you have leaky ducts. If there are leaky ducts, um, the leaks are going to uh, cause potentially large errors in your measurement. And just to give a little bit more on why you might need two hoods, that's because the, if you have a multiple return system, lower volumes are not going to be accurately measured with the passive flow hood and the powered flow hoods that are better for those measurements typically don't have enough capacity to measure a single return. So it's expensive, but it provides good measurements if it's used properly and you don't have leaky ducts. Okay. So we've mentioned that we recommend using flow hoods only on uh, return registers to get the total system airflow. And here we're gonna explain why. We've done quite a bit of testing on various flow hoods and uh, we have determined that on supply registers, there's some pretty significant errors that you really need to watch out for. And so this is the reason that we're recommending uh, to use this method only on return grills to make a total system airflow measurement. So this is a photo of the flow lab that we used to do our, our testing of flow hoods. This allows us to monitor the flow to each branch um, shown here and the total system airflow while we also measure it with the flow hood and then we can compare the two and see how accurate it was. Okay, and the results are, are as follows. The important column here is the accuracy column, the second one from the right. And you can see that the passive hoods, which are the, the top three and the bottom one, really did not have a good accuracy. As soon as you start seeing double digit accuracy numbers, you got to scratch your head and ask yourself if that's going to be okay for what you're trying to measure. And in this case, if you're using hoods with these accuracy numbers on, and you're trying to add up the registers to get a total system airflow, you could be left with some pretty large errors. <laughs> okay. We also want to talk about once you've made your measurement, what is that being used for? And we think there are two reasons that you might be making that measurement. The first one is you're either grading or confirming a new installation. So a new system has been installed and maybe you need to grade it according to ANSI ACA ResNet 310, or maybe this is a part of your company's installation process is to always verify that you have the correct system airflow. In either case, you're going to have a design airflow that you're trying to hit. And once you make the measurement, you can find out if you're within the tolerances that are allowed by your company or by the standard uh, to see if you're in specification. The second reason that you are likely making this kind of a measurement is because you're in some sort of a troubleshooting situation. And we wanna talk about this sort of situation in a little bit more detail. Okay, so if you're in a troubleshooting situation, we wanna talk a little bit about what should you be doing once you have a total system airflow. First of all, you need to understand that measuring the system airflow is not the only measurement that you'll need to be making. And what other measurements you should be making are gonna depend quite a bit on what the symptoms are. So there's some sort of an occupant issue if you're troubleshooting, it might be humidity, it might be high energy bills, it might be uh, condensation, or the system is not keeping up with the set point. But in any case, uh, you've got some sort of symptom that's guiding your process here. Once you have a system airflow, the, um, you don't have enough information usually to know uh, what the solution is. So there's more measurements that you're gonna need to be making. And 
one set of measurements that is very commonly made at the same time is the pressures in the system. So pressure in the supply duct, static pressure in the return duct, what's the pressure drop across the indoor coil, and what's the pressure drop across the filter. Those are measurements that can help you figure out if you have a pressure or if you have a system airflow that's too low, those measurements can guide you in the direction of what's causing the airflow to be too low. So this is a situation where um, TEC's static pressure and airflow measurements combined using an app can really help guide you in your troubleshooting process. The system automatically will help you make all the measurements and then help you draw some conclusions and put together a nice report that can help you and also help the homeowner to understand what might be going on and help you on your process of proposing a solution. So whatever you do, we recommend that you have a troubleshooting process that you're following that starts with carefully listening, listening to the occupant issues and then making measurements and diagnosis before you propose a solution. So thank you very much for joining us today. Again, this has been Airflow Measurement Training from the Energy Conservatory. I'm Stephen Rogers, working with Bill Graber at TEC, and our partners, Bill Spohn from True Tech Tools and Ed Johnawak from Eastern Heating and Cooling Council. Thank you. <laughs>